So it's a different story tonight in Ontario, Manitoba and B.C. As case numbers keep spiking, governments in those provinces are bringing the hammer down now. Millions of people representing roughly half of Canada's population are facing new restrictions tonight. Tonight, COVID-19 kicks kids out of school. My class numbers have been practically decimated. Dozens of students isolating. Some schools with outbreaks and the year just getting started. A fast do-it-yourself COVID test. It was like super easy. You just have to spit into a tube. The technology exists, so we will continue to be able to use it. You can still go shop for food, personal hygiene products, cleaning goods, building materials, car parts, winter clothes too. Schools have barely reopened across Canada, and already COVID-19 is disrupting. Yeah, students and employees testing positive. In some cases, forcing entire classes to isolate them. Also tonight, millions of Canadians are living under new restrictions as provinces desperately try to beat back the second one. These measures, they will have to be tough. The right to shop is not as important as the right to life. We need to take more action. Pre-COVID? So I would be in grade eight and maybe just wake up for school, go to school, come home, maybe some extracurriculars and, you know, get on games with your friends. Well, I just felt like a regular high school student. I was kind of, I was kind of bored uh, with just schoolwork and stuff. I joined some sports teams, but really my life really was just high school and home life. Before COVID, I had just gotten in Canada. It had been like, what, five months since I was in Canada. So I was kind of getting used to all the schedule with the school and the high school. I went to like some sporting events. I was on sports teams in my school. Um, I went to like summer camps, clubs, um, you know, what normal kids did. It's needless to say that my life pre-COVID was full of events. Um, it was a it was full of learning. It was full full of new moments. Um, I got to spend a lot of time without restrictions with with friends and family. No, I didn't know what COVID was at the beginning. I didn't know what a large impact it would have on so many people's lives, uh, schools, careers. I first heard about COVID through my family because they were hit first back in China. So that's where I got it from. But I, honestly, at first, I didn't think it was gonna affect us all the way over here because it was all the way in China. I thought they were gonna like contain it, but you know. I think I heard it over, uh, and I think my mom watched the national a lot. So I heard it over that. Um, and at first I thought it was going to be something like Ebola or Zika. But once they mentioned that it was um, uh, very transmissible, then I was kind of started to get worried. I think it was through social media. I think it was on like Instagram or something. I saw a news article. It's like COVID spread or something like that. Yeah, it was around like January, I think. It was actually in my geography class. We were getting out and they were saying that we would probably be out of school for like two weeks like after the March break and all that. And I was kind of confused because I didn't really know what COVID was at that time. Well, I heard it was overseas, so I never thought, I thought, I'm okay. I'm over here, it, I thought it would be fine and it would die out. 
I thought that it wouldn't really affect us since it was all the way in China and it didn't, uh, it seemed very far away, but it turns out it wasn't. I first heard about COVID was, I was on a call with my mom and she was like freaking out about uh, COVID-19. Since it hit China, my parents' home country, and she was like very cautious about it and telling me that I shouldn't be going out. Briefly, I all I knew was that it was a virus that could make you really sick and possibly kill you. I didn't know too much more than that. I heard about it on the news in the February before it happened, and I kind of thought it was a joke at first. I didn't think it was going to get as big as serious as it did. That it was going to be gone in a few weeks. It was just going to be kind of like SARS, because SARS was another coronavirus that didn't do much. But um, yeah, then they started telling people, OK, so you have to wear a mask if you want to go anywhere, and you have to stay inside. And it was like, oh, shh, wow. I just thought of it as like another flu or like a cold. I didn't really think much of it. I was, my father was watching the television on TV, and then we just hear about the COVID, and then no one go out, just stay inside. Honestly, because I didn't really know what COVID was, when I first he heard about it, I just thought it would be like, I don't know, like I actually, I was very confused. So for me, it was just two weeks off. I didn't really think it would be all of that. I heard we get extra time off for spring break and I was so excited for that. At that point, I'd kind of got the idea that we weren't going back to school and it had already impacted enough of the world to cause further issues. At first, um, I was quite joyous. I was happy to hear that we'd have some time off. I assumed that we won't have um, lots, like a workload. Um, but eventually, through time, I found out that it restricted my time uh, that I spent with friends and family. So like my socializing um, decreased. School shutting down initially, I was like, yeah, March break and two weeks off school because I am a high school student. Sometimes I don't like school. Um, and then through that, I was, I was pretty comfortable. School adjusting to online was mid, but I was, I was fully in for it the first you know, two weeks. I didn't went to no mall, go out with my friend, hang out, go to school. We just stay inside. I thought it was gonna be like, oh, just two weeks off. And then they started extending it even more. And I'm like, this is not going to stop. Like, we're not going back. had online classes like I said I didn't really get up much earlier than when start uh, classes started so I would get up at like 8 and then classes started at 8 15 I would be in bed I would not get out of bed because I didn't have to turn my camera on so I did not worry about where I was um, and it would end pretty pretty early, so I wouldn't do anything for the whole entire day. So majority of the time, I honestly did not go to class because there was do no harm. Your marks couldn't go any lower. Like the teachers tried to like scare you and like make it seem like the marks actually matter, but in reality, they did not. And I would just, after online school or during online school, I would just get on like a call with my friends and start playing games. I greatly appreciate the teachers' efforts. Uh, they were all evident in showing that they wanted to still make us involved. They wanted us to still have a voice, still speak up and learn each day. So I think they truly tried their best uh, in creating lots of interactive um, events, whether it was through online or assignments. I had this uh, one teacher, I forget her name, but 
she would try her best to try to include everybody and try to get people to turn their cameras on. But a lot of people, I think, were camera shy and nobody really, really wanted to. So I think they tried their best, but uh, it just wasn't working. So the quad masters or like the 12 days and like you get the whole subject and that was, that was actually useless. They just cram information in your brain and like it kind of just like goes in and goes out. You don't really remember anything. The classes online were just super stale and like there was like no interaction, no like teacher student interaction. It was like really boring. In person learning is always going to be superior as it motivates not just me but lots of students to just get up every day and do the required work. I think it's a great way to actually learn because life is all about getting out there and putting yourself out there and learning through mistakes. I used to think that having four classes a day was like going to be a lot, but then it turns out like it's actually hard sitting in like a, one class all day. So it's a lot better. My grades were affected a lot. I I don't I prefer being in school. I don't like online and I would fall asleep during class a lot and I would miss a lot of good information. The do no harm was uh, helpful. I do worry now if, uh, if there wasn't the do no harm thing there, if my grades would have been worse. But I've, I have a feeling they stayed pretty much the same. No, no matter if you did work or didn't do work, you would still have like either the same grade or higher than what you ended with. So I did like a few activities just to, so I was able to get honors, but that was about it. So you think your grade was higher than it actually would have been? Yeah, definitely. Everyone's grades were inflated. Right. Yeah. Um, my, my grades didn't really fall. Like I, I know that it was like something, what was it, like 75% or whatever. It couldn't fall underneath. Um, I think it really benefited some students, uh, but we have so much sugarcoating now that I think now students in grade 12 are going to struggle a lot, especially with um, exam season coming up. So it cushioned us in one way, but it set us up for failure in another way. Um, so it's got its pros and cons to it for sure. I think when I compare with others, a lot of people say their high school years were one of the best years of their life. And I think I'm not gonna share that same memory that they had. Even though it's been like four years, three and a half years, I think, I'm not really familiar with my school. I don't, I don't know the layout that great, and I don't really know a lot of the teachers. I'm not really close to them as much as I would have liked to be. I don't think I'm gonna really think back upon high school that fondly. It feels like I'm still in grade eight, honestly, um, struggling through high school, but Terrifying to be a senior. Um, it's so weird seeing grade nines run around the school and have like their grade nine life that I could have had. I'm a little bit jealous, yeah, but it's, it's really nice to be back in person fully. Like, I know that COVID is still a lasting thing, but it fully doesn't feel like it's affecting Beal anymore. Um, like the pool is opening up now, uh, sports teams are fully back in swing, clubs are back up, you know. Um, we've really shifted to a stage where we're almost fully back to normal and I think that's really nice as a senior where you get to experience that uh, one last year as, it, as it's supposed to be. start this half hour with more on how the coronavirus is impacting the sports world. New announcements overnight of events being postponed or canceled and young athletes robbed of their chances to shine. Ah, uh, yes, I was on uh, volleyball and softball teams. Can you tell us how it was um, affected? Um, they were all shut down. Uh, and that was the last year. It was all school run, so I didn't get any more after that. Are you involved in any sports? Yeah. yeah, basketball, volleyball, badminton. Were you involved in those sports when COVID hit or just now? No, 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 COVID hit. When COVID hit? Yeah. So how were they infected? Like, how were the sports infected? Um, it was so confusing. Sometimes the teacher said, we're gonna cancel this because the COVID, we can't do that because it's yeah. social distance. 
I was involved with cross country. It didn't, COVID didn't affect it that much, but it did affect it like dur- during the time COVID was impacted like bad. But uh, it did impact my track and field. I joined the track team and we only went into like two, three practices and then it was shut down. I used to play basketball, volleyball, badminton, like all sorts of stuff. How was it affected by COVID? Well, obviously it was all shut down and throughout COVID, didn't really um, exercise that much. So I got really rusty at all of them. How did that affect you? Like, are you back at playing sports or are you, did you just stop? Yeah, I still play a little bit of badminton and volleyball, but that's about it. I was involved, uh, let's see, grade 9, grade 10, I was involved in cross country a lot. Uh, grade 10, I was involved in um, swimming during the winter. So you were affected, the sport was affected by COVID, right? Yeah, um, winter, I, uh, I don't think I ever went to uh, swimming lessons again after that, or well, not lessons, swimming after that. Um, the cross country team wasn't that affected, but it was still like disrupted majorly. Did any sports before COVID? Before COVID, yeah. I was pretty athletic. Uh, basketball, volleyball, basically just did classic extracurriculars. Yeah, uh, 10th grade, there wasn't any extracurricular curricular sports because COVID, but. Um, yeah, ninth grade, there was going to be, at the end of ninth grade, there was track and field. Never got to do that, so I was bummed. But Are you back? I just didn't do sports after that. Well, the process of determining how school sports will work in the fall is on a lot of parents' minds right now. 10 Sports reporter Brooke Leonard joins us now. Brooke, we learned some new information today regarding Phase 2 for fall teams. Yeah, and as we already knew, as soon as school districts submit their action plan to the Department of Education, they can begin working out the very next day. Today, the VHSL broke down how each sport will move forward in Phase 2. For fall sports, starting with football, the guidelines... Like, I feel... It isn't like the same, to be honest. Like it doesn't feel all the same, especially with extracurricular. Because back then, I would say it was more every week we went to cross country meets. Now we just go to one meet and then we wait until TV Raw. And like we don't get a chance to go to a bunch of meets instead of meets every week like it used to be. I miss a lot of games. I miss my teamwork, and then I miss my friend because we was playing every time. And then my teacher say, "Oh, my you might better focusing to play basketball because this week we're gonna win." And then I miss that. It still feels like there's progress to be made. I was becoming very isolated and it just made me feel not great about much of it. So I had to kind of escape it. Um, I felt dis- disconnected and lonely. I felt like I was missing out on lots of social events and religious holidays. And that time that I could have made memories was taken for granted. And, and that played a, a large role in kind of worsening anxiety. I felt like it was never going to end. I just wanted it to be over. I feel lonely. I feel sad because I miss my friend, my team, like play basketball. It was a lot of uncertainty, uh, not knowing what is happening or what's going on. I think that because I was new here and I didn't really know anyone and I couldn't like really see the people that I knew in my country, it really made me feel alone. To cope with that, I just spent my time talking to my friends. I would try to distract myself with, you know, media, games, reading, literally anything just to distract myself. Music. Music was something that was, it's, it's kind of my form of therapy. 
a lot of video games. I picked up some new hobbies, stuff that you can do online. Coding, I've picked up coding, and I started a little bit of music development, but then I stopped. I actually got some new hobbies, so I started playing the guitar a lot and listening to music, that's for sure, that's something that helped me. Did those techniques work? Did they help you? Yeah, for the most part it worked, but you know, after two years you start to get a little, you know, crazy and, and those things aren't as fun anymore. It's, it doesn't help, yeah. Ah uh, yes, I did. How? Um, through Discord mostly. So you wouldn't see them? No. Um, until at least the summer, I wasn't going out with people. We were kind of like on lockdown, following the rules, staying online, zero contact, and then further into the summer, then I started to explore. Yeah, I would say most of my friends I kept contact with, but. Some of them I lost contact with, maybe because I didn't reach out to them online or I just didn't talk enough through like quarantine. But I feel like majority of my friends are like, you know, still in contact. I did stay in contact with a lot of my friends during the beginning of the lockdown. And like our friendships ended up like drifting really like severely with how we all handled our emotions with this whole pandemic yeah so i use social media to stay in contact with my close friends mm -hmm. we had a group chat together and we just i spent most of my time with my best friend so uh between me and like the friends i already knew there wasn't that much of an effect since we were still talking to each other every day and didn't really feel like anything changed it's just it, you just missed out on the opportunity to meet like new people that you normally would if you went to school normally? I don't think it really impacted. Like, I clearly couldn't make new friends, but it didn't like impact my social life with my other friends, like my friends that I already had before. I would say my social life was impacted greatly in terms of not having the chance to talk to others or socialize anymore. It felt like something we couldn't do because it was unsafe. It felt like we couldn't talk to others as it would put us in, great, in a great risk. It made it a little bit harder to meet people at first. Um, just more of a social barrier, I guess. I think at a certain point, I didn't care as much. Like I obviously still followed the rules and everything, but at a certain point when I couldn't go out to like visit like my dad or something like I, I would break it for that reason yeah I feel like I got a lot more timid like a lot more quiet I used to be like really loud extroverted but now I just keep to myself and like all sorts of stuff I guess I think I got more extroverted as I got out of COVID because I just uh, had more of a need to get out and socialize with people. I didn't like isolation, but I think I'm better because of it. I might be more socially awkward, um, but I feel like I can work that out. I'm very grateful that the restrictions are finally lifted. Um, even though there's still today, um, COVID still exists. It is reduced to a much um, safer proportion. But now that the restrictions are lifted, I think we have a lot more freedom to interact with others, uh, to improve on our um, physical and mental health. My thoughts on the restrictions being lifted, I'm kind of glad that it happened because there was once like the flu 
like once started off as COVID, but like everyone's gonna catch it at some point. And some of us like have high immune system, some of us don't, but no matter what, we're gonna get it. They did rush it a bit. Like it was a little too early to like r remove mask mandates and let us go back. It was like really frustrating when they let us back in. And then as soon as we get a break from school, we were told it was gonna stay a lockdown for a bit. Um, I think like if we just had the lockdown, like nobody was allowed out for the two weeks and it would die down somewhat. So I think that was a mistake. And also lifting like restrictions and then putting them back and then keep doing that over and over was a mistake. Like the little lockdowns for like a month or so, like that was kind of pointless because we just went back to school and got like another lockdown. So maybe like a lockdown for like a really long time and then like, you know, that's it. I think I, I was more of a different person. I think I was more mature after COVID. Um, but I don't think the relationships changed that much. I remember going uh, with my couple of my friends for a walk around Victoria Park and I haven't seen them in a long time, even before COVID. But it felt like we just picked up where we left off. I think weirdly enough, I became more extroverted being inside, which is not what you would think. Um, I, I'm not too sure why, but I think I just got tired of being so quiet all the time. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna change. So. Um, I would say I realized how um, important school and social life meant to me. It was, it, I think it was, um, a fundamental part in making up what we learn each day and what we do each day. So it just made school life and social life important. Over? I don't think it's over. Like, because people still get COVID, but I feel like people just stop caring about it and like stop worrying about it. It's going to be here for a while. It might be done for good in a couple decades, maybe. I don't, I'm not a scientist, so yeah. It would be, it, my life would be so much better if COVID never happened, but most people could say that. I'm going to be so happy if you, like the COVID gonna done, all we, we don't want to hear anything about COVID, COVID back, no, I don't want to hear that. I'm just going to be happy and go be proud. Do you think COVID will ever be over? I don't think it will. I think it'll end up being something like the flu. No, and I don't think it's ever going to be over totally because it's, it's here. It's not going anywhere. It, it can't just disappear. No, no, it's going to be here for a while. No, I don't think it'll be over. I think it'll die down a bit. Personally, I think COVID isn't over. It won't be over for a while. Over? I don't think it's over because like, people still get COVID, but I feel like people just stop caring about it and like stop worrying about it. Certainly not over. It's you know it's still a, a virus. You can't like just say it's over. It's just the restrictions they're gone. So if we just had the lockdown, like nobody was allowed out for the two weeks, and it would die down somewhat. So I think that was a mistake. And also lifting like restrictions and then putting them back and then keep doing that over and over was a mistake. It's. COVID is a part of our, our everyday lives now, like I said before, like the way that we've kind of, we have plexi, plexiglass screens now, um, just kind of the way that we've kind of changed our environment. Um, so it's kind of shifted how we do things on an everyday basis on a whole, I think now. I do think that eventually it'll be something forgotten, something in the history people will always talk about and mention how it impacted their lives and the world, it was a global thing. I feel like people just will just not even talk about it anymore because, you know, the Spanish flu. Do you ever hear of anybody getting like the Spanish flu now or like chicken pox or anything? So I feel like it's going to be one of those. Maybe further development on vaccines, um, like a regular vaccine. How has COVID altered your view of your own future? I think going forward, 
I will be more conscious of my health and safety. I, it's not something that I would consider normally if it did not happen. So I think, yeah, I'll just be more conscious. I feel like that it made me realize that time is like more precious because those quarantine years, just, they just flew by. And I feel like we just really had to enjoy like, you know, our time like in the present. From the beginning, I thought I wasn't going to go to college. I was probably going to either drop out or something, but it gave me a strong idea of what I want in the future and what I see myself doing in the future. You can really, like during COVID, you can really see which uh, like industries in the economy are extremely vulnerable to things like this and which industries thrived. I mean, small businesses, restaurants, that kind of thing, they all suffered immensely, but industries like well like social media like internet based industries and like the tech world they they thrive they made more money than like any other uh, industry so that really like puts a puts into perspective like what type of industry i want to go into in the future like whether it will be uh sustainable or not what lingering effects do you think covid will be education the education system as it is uh online schooling I did not find online schooling to be very effective, if effective at all. A lot of people just don't learn like that. They cannot sit in front of a screen for two and a half, three, four hours, depending on how long you had to be there. Our brains are not meant to function like that. We're supposed to have hands on, like, we're supposed to be in front of a teacher learning. I feel like a lot of the economical issues that it brought on will forever last. Mainly on the families. I think a lot of the families who lost a lot of people are still going to, of course, remember COVID more than the people who like didn't get affected by it. The deaths that it caused uh, globally, um, obviously these people suffered. A lot more uh, mental health issues will rise, I think are, are rising because of it. People will start looking at kind of society as much more of a like human society and infrastructure as more of a thing now, more tangible than we used to think about it. I think our society will be much more self-aware uh, and more globally conscious. Probably long-term health effects. You can probably see that right now in some people. There's not enough, there's not enough uh, information about COVID and research done that we know, know for a fact what COVID's effect is on the human body. Uh, we'll only see the long-term effects when the time comes, so. We have a lot more time than we realize and you should connect with people. Even if it's someone that you haven't, you know, contacted in like two, three years, you know, like reach out, say hi. It doesn't have to be a full-blown like conversation. Just like keep things linked. Don't leave things for like two or three years. Don't, you know, kind of isolate people. Just keep in contact, make sure you have like a good sturdy someone to, to rely and count on at all times. I think I learned patience. Patience as in just hoping this would be over and just learning to adjust with it throughout. Also realizing what others went through and like knowing that a lot of people struggled with this as well and it was just not an individual experience but it was a global thing. I definitely learned that you have to value a lot of your relationship with the people that you love. You don't know when's the last time that you're gonna see them because some people did pass away because of COVID. So you don't know if that's the last time you're gonna see them. Talk to people. Don't become isolated. Don't isolate yourself because all of the stuff that happens in your life and you need to talk about it with someone that's what people are for we're social beings we're meant to do stuff with people being alone just kind of defeats the purpose of human nature i suppose make as much memories as possible try to make time for your friends to make as much memories and like live it because in the future you won't know if you can experience that the same way as you would now. I hope that the world will learn for like this pandemic and we're like locked down better because the situation in especially Ontario wasn't handled that like well. My hopes are to not get COVID. 
<laughs> that's my main hope. I hope that there's like no more restrictions, like it'll start to die down. People can live how they want, how they did before COVID started. Cause yeah, it was better that way. Well, obviously my hope is that COVID goes away completely, but like, uh, like realistically, just that uh, the, the restrictions are all over then that we don't have to go back to the lockdown again. I hope the COVID don't come back again and I want everybody to be happy. It's filming. <gasps>